and I'm very fortunate uh, right now to visit an amazing place. It's called the Gyora Aharoni Design Studio, and this is my friend Gyora. You have the link right there, and uh, you know I came here to do an interview for an Israeli uh, magazine with a friend of mine uh, that I've known for a long time. And where we are right now is the studio at the Gyora Aharoni Design Studio. We were talking about the mystery of time. Mm -hmm. And I was saying that the Yoga Vashishta says time is the consumer and we are its food. And we are time's food. And what you're saying is time is malleable. Mm -hmm. It's not something fixed, right? You can stretch it, you can slow it down, you can transcend it. it it's very fascinating. I, I find that we are um, wired to think linearly. Uh, because we are captured between two points, between life when we are dead, when we are born and when we die. And then what we do, we, we draw a line between those two points and then we drop what we call the timeline of history. The hypercube and then the, the fourth dimension in particular says that if you actually shift that perspective, you'll see that it, that time is actually malleable. That there is no future and there is no past. There is only present. And rather to than thinking that to think that we are traveling in time, time is traveling to us. So if we had a plant here right next to us, um, and we came here like a year later, and the plant grew, uh, we would say this plant did not move anywhere. It did not travel in time. Time had an effect on the plant. So it's the same thing with us. Um, we are always present, and there is nothing but this. Uh, and nothing the, exists but us this. right now. Yeah. And but the past and future, which exists in the imagination, also are now. Absolutely. Right? There, are, there are always a now. And, and there now, is a now. And now is not a moment in time. Now is infinity, its presence. Correct. It's the consciousness which conceives and constructs and then becomes the experience of time. And you know what's what's really confusing about this is that when you when when we talk and we start to, to investigate the malleability of time and we say to somebody you can travel in time you can sculpt in time and people immediately what do you mean you can travel in time I can travel to ancient Egypt and again the linearity we're so captured in that in that linear moment ancient Egypt was another was a now. Um, and now we're at this now. When the past happened, it happened now. Absolutely. When the present is happening, it's happening now. And the future it's is happening. happening, it's happening now. And it's amazing how different cultures has different variety of way of perceiving time uh, in terms of the future. In ancient Near East, the future was behind you and the past was in front of you. That's right. And it's because your eyes, you see the past you don't see the future. Um, and in the Western culture, it's we are actually, it's the other way around. We're walking blindly into, uh, into the future. So we love, uh, one of the things that we investigate, this is the laboratory that actually invests all, uh, in all of these nuances uh, of time. What are you looking at here? Do you recognize this? The different ways of measuring experience that we call time. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. Uh, thank you. This is you recognize this now? Yes, it's an old TV set, right? No, no, no. Think home. Think when you were a child. This is a rickshaw meter. Oh yeah, yeah. This is yeah, a yeah. meter. This is in a meter India, in, in India. This is a taxi meter. Taxi rickshaws. It, it's a it's a meter that capture what? It two things. Experience basically from where I am to where ah, I'm going. Beautiful. But it's actually captured time and distance. Time and distance. Two. Space and time. And what equal what? Money. Money. So this is a very for me it's a very spiritual device. It's a it's a device that actually um, captured two things that we're battling with. We do not understand time and we do not understand distance. And what I did in this and yet particular... we are always thinking of saving time so we can make uh, more money. Absolutely, absolutely. And saving time... Oh, oh, wait, wait. This is a very fascinating thing because uh, Stephen and I um, created a list 
of all the vocabulary that we associate with time, none of them is related to time. It's all coming, we are appropriating from different, different spectrum. So saving time, spending time, killing time, um, if you, down time, down time, time and, play but, time, but nothing is actually time. related to time itself. Mm -hmm. Which shows you the, the perplex and you know how we do not know what to do with it. We segmented it, and we believe that segmentation, and we and we think that this is what time is about. All these different languages. So you were telling me this is uh, what Hindu. Hindu. Hindu is a combination of Hindi and Urdu. And Hebraic is a combination of um, uh, Hebrew and Arabic. Arabic. So this is Mere liye ek mandir banao, which means make a temple. And underneath it is Call me. in Hebrew, yeah. which is make me a temple. Make me a temple. Mm -hmm. This is how we actually construct the whole fabric of space time and causality by these constructs, right? Mm -hmm. And the temple, of course, is consciousness itself. Absolutely. All these fields. That's a beautiful uh, writing there also. So uh, I'll tell you what this one, this one is, is also in, in, in Hindu and Hebraic. Um, this one says, thank God for making me a woman. Oh, and thank God for making me a woman is part of 11 prayers that, um, that um, are prayed in the morning by Orthodox Jews. Um, and the, the prayer actually is, thank God for not making me a woman. So what I was investigating in this particular one is that the, the kind of consciousness that, that, in, like, that sits into men in particular, what happens when you are praying every morning with a negativity of thank God for not making you the other. Um, it, it creates a kind of division, a kind of like, you know, between an exclusion um, uh, so in this particular one, it's actually, um, um, the, historically, in the 16th century, there was a rabbi by Abraham Pritzker um, in um, Florence, I think, and he uh, created two prayer books for two anonymous women, and he consciously changed all the prayers that were not... Um, thank uh, God for uh, making me a woman. No, he actually thanked God for not making me a man. man. Um, so... So in this particular one, I prayed to thank God for making me a woman, and, and after the uh, rape in Delhi, I created it in Hindu. Um, so, uh, and again, uh, I have a very, uh, I, uh, I'm, I'm a, a Hindu um, yes. uh, by birth, yes. um, and, and that's, you know, so my, my parallel worlds are happening in both Hebrew and Hindi. And what are these? What's all this stuff with? Uh, so let's, look, stuff with? let's look at this yeah. one over here. This is this is called Genesis, and Genesis is the um, a Some series. Yeah, this, is it, it, this is called Genesis. This is called Genesis. Yeah, this is Genesis, and this is a series of seven sculptures, where each sculpture is representing a day in creation. In this particular one, we're actually investigating the notion of creation and time. So two, again, very complex concepts. Um, we associate creation with the divine. So everything, the universe was created by the divine. And we, what the, the things that we do not associate is every creation that we're creating is a divine creation. You write, it's a divine creation. You bring a child to the world, it's a divine creation. Uh, you give a lecture that feeds people's minds. It's a divine creation. And we need to take that weight with us when we are... So, so this particular project, that what I did is that I'm actually... It started as, 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 um, as a thesis, as a thought, when I was in school. And, and if you see the, the text on the wall, it's actually old text. And it says that this work is about the conflict between religion and science. Ten years later, when the work is complete, the, the narrative changed, and it is about the, 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 the complementarities of, absolutely, of, of religion and science, and the, and the conversation between religion and science. And what you see here are, are actually vintage beakers from the 1920s to the 1970s, 
and they are what I engrave the entire um, um, first chapter of Genesis onto the speakers. Um, and then when I finished it, every single day was dedicated to that day of whatever God created on that day. So what's really interesting is that when I was done with it, I said, now I mix it all up. So elements from the first day appears in the fifth day. Um, the, the, the emblems that are associated from one day are, so, so I actually wanted to physically create malleability and break the linearity of what God created in each day. And, and then there is one thing that is very fascinating is that, that uh, there, there is an attention here also to the fact that God has created everything through the spoken word. And what does it mean? The word became the flesh. Correct. And, but that's science today. Today, science, are, like in, in particular in MIT, they're investigating the, the, the complexity of that embedded in the spoken word, and they separate sound from vibration. Mm -hmm. So in the, word, in the spoken word, there is a vibration, a vibration that can move, slightly move. That means that we're talking about um, creative vibrations. And those creative vibrations, and God said, let it be light. Um, and the light was the light of awareness. The light, the light of awareness, absolutely. So my friends, this is, this is the matrix in symbolic form. The matrix, the womb of creation. All knowers, all words of knowing, and all things known in the matrix. You are the matrix. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Thank Absolute you so much. Pleasure.